Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Welcome to Business Radio X, broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studio inside Max 6 Workspace and the Conscious Capitalism Arizona headquarters in Tempe, Arizona, where we help build businesses and connect you with the right people. I'm your host and Phoenix Business Radio X CEO, Karen Nowicki, and I am very excited to have a couple of guests with me on for this very special segment that we're calling Heal the Past and Light the Future. And it is a prelude and an opportunity to talk a little bit about the conference where several guides and mentors and just human beings are coming together to celebrate life and uh, really life, I think is probably the best way to put it. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Heal the Past, Light the Conference, Light the Future Conference organizer and presenter, Daniel Adams. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. So thrilled to have you. Yeah. And uh, with us as well, and hang on, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between my notes as well, is Tiffany. Tell me your last name again, Tiffany. I switched my screen. I can't see it now. Tiffany Fletcher. Thank you, Tiffany Fletcher. That was easy. I should have had that down. And Tiffany will be joining us as well with a lot of experience as a speaker, someone who inspires and motivates and has a beautiful uh, history around really helping people shift and uh, really building that resiliency and that tenacity. Am I right? Yes. Very good. So let's jump in, and uh, I'm going to start recording right now because I didn't have a chance to do that as far as video goes. Thank goodness I'm doing my job as a radio host. We're already recording and broadcasting live in the Phoenix area. So, Dan, can you start us off by telling us a little bit about uh, the Heal the Past, Light the Future conference and then how you came to be part of this with us? Absolutely. The conference is all about strengthening families by strengthening individuals. We believe that. Family is the fundamental unit of society, and the stronger the families, the stronger we are as a nation. And the peace is an inside job, right? There are so many beautiful movements, agencies, nonprofits to try and create peace on the planet. For me, peace is an inside job. It starts with individuals, and that starts in the home. And when it, as it ripples out from there, I, I know we're going to see. I'm getting goosebumps. Like. <laughs> That is where the change happens. That is where people get formed. And so when the when my partner Corinne reached out and said, Hey, I've got this idea for a conference, it just lit me. And I knew that we had to get it to as many families as possible, as many individuals as possible. And I love so much to strengthen families and to awaken creativity. I do a lot of work as a music therapist um, in hospice. So I, I watch a lot of people die and work with families through the greatest transition. Um, I've done quite a bit working in residential treatment centers. I work as a coach, freeing up emotional capital and key relationships. And it just keeps coming back to, man, families were made to be the safe space. And some of these people's family is not a safe space. And how do we create that? We create that with strong individuals. And so we got so amped about this conference. Um, that's September 27th and 28th in Sandy, Utah. We got so amped about this conference to give individuals the tools they need to come to peace with themselves and shine that in the home to make the home the strongest, most epic place possible for learning, for growth, for love. So, so amped. Yeah, clearly. I love it. What would you have to add to that, Tiffany, based on your experiences, uh, both in your own personal and professional life, but also what you're bringing to this conference? For me, so, and please excuse me because I have a cold, so hopefully it doesn't come over in the airwaves, but I am, I love this conference because um, for me, I grew up in a home where there was so much dysfunction. I grew up with a mom who had multiple personalities. She had 14 different altars. Um, They ranged in age from a three-year-old little boy all the way up to a violent altar named Bill. So it was quite chaotic growing up and it was very difficult to um to manage sometimes but for me I learned some resiliency skills that were vital to help me get through that hard time to help me bring light into the darkness of that space and um so that's what I go around teaching I teach people 
about resiliency skills, how they can have these skills, use them within their own home and bring light into their dark spaces. And um, I'm so excited to present it here because I feel like Hill the Past and Light the Future is a perfect venue to learn those skills that will bring light into our dark spaces. Wow. Oh, what a history. I spoke to a woman uh, earlier today who had had a very different upbringing than what you've just described, but uh, I'll use the word tragic, a very tragic upbringing. Similarly, she's now bringing her awareness, her ability to shift and change as an individual to Dan's point earlier, it's an inside job. And now she's teaching others through what she experienced and didn't really know any better as you didn't either. You had to find your way to resiliency. And what a great right. gift for you to be able to share your personal experiences, what you've come to know to be true, and give us those tactical tools and skill sets to move forward. Yes. Daniel, how about you? So your background, you, you mentioned you're a musician and, and therapist, of course. And uh, what led you to your work? Do you, do you mind sharing a bit about, little bit about who you are and how you, how you landed here? <laughs> Absolutely. Gosh, where to start? I was born so on many, a bright, sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many things that I don't have words for that I have sounds for. Mm. And all through middle school and high school and college, like music was such a big part of my journey because I'd just go downstairs in the basement and beat the snot out of the drums. And that was like the only way that I knew how to move all my anxiety and all the craziness, you know that I was experiencing. And that was so healthy for me. And so as I pursued that path, I started in music education because I knew I wanted to like light all these people and realized that maybe teaching Susie to play the French horn wasn't, wasn't quite the path. And so I started looking at how to blend psychology and music. Um, I lived in Brazil for a while and helped people with like substance abuse treatment plans and um, help them kind of find their spiritual footing. And I really love that work. And so when I came came back to the U.S., um, I found a music therapy program at Utah State University and went through that that degree and that certification process. And the more I've worked with people, the more I realize like I love to inspire people with the ideas that really get them pumping. And you know, I love to be outside. Being in a marriage, I've been married for 11 years. I have an eight-year-old son. And it hit me that just like the simple act of like committing to a partner every day for like as long as that lasts and to committing to be present with kids, like that's one of the greatest purifiers, mirrors. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, you know, there's so many times that I've thought about like, I can't handle this we're not meant to be. This is just too hard. Like I'm at like the only, you know, I kept coming back to this like illusion of separation that like the only way to move on is just like, we can't even be together anymore. And so I've dug deeper and deeper through all this literature and all these experiences and all my professional pursuits to figure out how is it that I can sit in a marriage because, and it hit me like she's shining at me, all the things I don't like about myself. And again, it's an inside job. How do I get this, the tools and the resources to sit with that? And that's been a big part of my journey. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I love it. So many things are sparking for me. Uh, I've now been married uh, for a second time for 15 years, and we have a 12-year-old kiddo together. I had been married previously for just as long, uh, and I have two kids uh, who are in their 20s. And I had to really figure my way out into healing through the trauma and the experiences I had growing up and the decisions that I made about myself based on everything, you know, the school I went to, the community I was in, what my parents said, the religion I grew up in, all that. And I know we can all nod our heads and relate. <laughs> and, and when I uh, started studying and working on not only personal growth, but then made the choice to become an integrative coach professional, uh, what we call what you've described is shadow work, right? So that's one of the things that we really focused on as, as a community uh, of coaches. And I always tell the story that for my first seven years of marriage, I tried to fix my ex-husband. I try to fix Dale because, you know, something was wrong with him. We weren't jiving, so there must be something <laughs> wrong with him. And then the next seven years, after a lot of counseling, a lot of therapy, a lot of personal growth work, I realized, okay, well, now I had to go to work on me because it's not him. It must be me. So another seven years working on me to come to find out uh, that we were really just 
meant to be together in this phase. I'm not an advocate for divorce, so I'll say that right now. But I found that neither of us needed fixing. (laughs) We just needed to stay committed to each other. And I'm very blessed and pleased to say that Mike and I have that together. So when I hear friends and families and clients going through uh, marital strife and, and challenges, I kind of say, hey, hooray for you. You're human. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> and and to your point, Daniel, go inside and, and figure your way through it, right? Some some folks make it work and some don't. Uh, Tiffany, you're, you're, uh, are you married? And I know you've got kids. I've, I know I remember you sharing that. Tell us a little bit about your background related to, you know, kind of what we're talking about here and, and the conference. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I am married. We are celebrating our 19th anniversary this Saturday. Congratulations. Hurrah. Yeah, we have five kids. My oldest is 18 and my youngest is 11. So we had five kids in six and a half years. It was Busy. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you want to, you those deserve an award, years, a trophy. Yeah. Those early years were tough. But um, the thing that um, I feel helped most in my relationship with my husband and my children is coming out of um, of the trauma of my childhood. I was a very angry child. Um, I it, that was that was the emotion that kept showing itself for me. Like everything that I was was dealing with came out in anger. And so early on, um, when I was a young mom, I realized that this anger was starting to cause me to um, hit my children and my my youngest, my oldest son. I remember the day where he said something, and I and I can't even remember what it was. All I remember is that I slapped his mouth and I sh- I, I just shrieked back and I said, no, I am not going to be my mother. I am not. And, and you know, and my father, he struggled with abuse too. Like I was abused a lot um, as a child. And um, I, I realized that it was a cycle that um, was being perpetuated even long before my parents. And I said, no, this is not, I am, it ends here. And so I, um, <clears throat> I actually, I actually um, looked up anger management classes and luckily the community the community that i lived in had one that they were just they were starting in just a couple of weeks um and anyone could attend so i registered for it and i was pregnant i was very pregnant with my fifth child <laughs> and i went into that um classroom and it was filled with um it was filled i, I was the only woman other sure. than the teacher. And it was just filled with really scary looking men, men that looked like they had just, um, like had been hijacked by a biker gang, really. The classroom, it was crazy. What we would and say, you know, stereotypically uh, angry men. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very angry men. And I was scared to death. And I just thought, okay, I've got two choices. I can either go into this room or I can quit now. And the thought of going back and being the same person was not okay. And so I thought I can do this scary thing um, because my children's life, I felt my children's life and, and wellness depended on it. And so I went into that anger management class. And um, the one thing that I took out of it was very pivotal for me there. And it was just told on a whim by the teacher. And she she shared the story about an, a Cherokee Indian chief, uh, a grandfather whose son was a warrior and he came to him and said, and uh, his grandfather said, son, there, there are two wolves that are always fighting within us, one black wolf and one white wolf. The mm-hmm. black wolf is anger and hatred and, and anything that, that comes from darkness, that the white wolf is light and love and kindness and charity and goodness. And they're constantly fighting a battle within us. And the, the grandson said, but grandfather, which one wins? And the grandfather said, well, son, it's the one that you feed. And from that moment on, like that story was so pivotal for me because I realized that I did have a choice, that even in the difficult circumstances that I had growing up, that I was not a victim of that, that I had a choice. I could choose to feed the dark wolf with the anger of the trials that I was going through, or I could feed the white wolf. And so from that day forward, I decided that I was going to make a conscious effort to feed that white wolf. And now my kids, they're so funny. I love them. And they're teenagers now. And and they don't have a memory of me when I was angry mom. And they even say, mom, I can't even imagine you getting upset. I can't even imagine you hitting us. I can't, I can't imagine because that day I took my power. I took my power back and I became the mother that my kids needed. 
And in doing that, that cycle was broken. And I, and I also do that with my husband. I, um, you know, a lot of times in our lives, when it comes to our husbands, we like, (laughs) like Daniel said, it's easy to see all of the things that they're doing wrong. It's easy to, to, to do that. But if we change our perspective and see the things that they're doing right, it can make all the difference. For example, I'm sorry, I'm taking a lot of time. Elsha, no, but hey, listen, we've got you. we've got plenty of time, and and we're Dan and all I right. keep nodding our heads. There's so much juice here. I just like I want to unpack it. It's beautiful. Keep going. All right. <laughs> okay. So that's what's one last story. So, um, when we were first married, my husband he would put the toilet paper roll on the toilet paper wrong. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> there really is a right way to do it. Over <laughs> the top. Wrong. Over the top, right. right? Tell me it's over the top. No, <laughs> I like it the other way. Isn't that so funny? <laughs> like, for me, it just flows better when it's behind. And I'm so I, I was always... Yeah, me too, Dan, yeah, me too. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's so funny. But I was like, ah, he knows that I like it this way. Why does he always put it on backwards? And, you know, and it was like... And then I would start tell myself this story, right? Like, oh, he doesn't love me. He doesn't love me because he's not putting it on the right way. And he's not, he doesn't honor me and what, what I, what I feel is right or, you know, whatever that story that we all tell ourselves of, you know, what our husband does. And then one day I was sitting there and the thought came to my mind, Tiffany, you are so silly. Your husband loves you so much that he put toilet paper on the roll. Like you don't have to sit here calling for Not anyone. Not sitting on top you of it, right? <laughs> toilet paper. Like he loves you, and he was thoughtful, of thinking oh. of you, at thinking of your needs even before you needed them. You are so blessed. And I thought, oh my goodness, that is truth. Like it is not. It doesn't matter how he does it. The fact is, is that he did it. Right. And then when I asked him once, I was like, why don't you turn it this way? And he's like, to be honest with you, I don't think about it. It's like, there's so many things going through my head. I don't think about how to put toilet paper on the roll. I just do it. And um, that was a real eye opener for me too, because we tend to tell ourselves these stories when someone does something that we think is wrong or we, you know, we don't, don't understand. We tell ourselves this, we make up this story about it and the story isn't even right. And so in marriage, it's so important that we learn to base our stories on fact, to learn and understand and communicate with each other so that those stories don't become the end of our marriage. We need to, we need to constantly bring that good, that goodness and see that goodness and that light in our companion so that they can then reflect it back to us. So much, huh, Dan? So much. One thing that's really present for me right now is the courage of the current generation to stand up and say, here's what I experienced, essentially stepping out of the closet in any number of ways. You know, I experienced abuse. I experienced addiction. I experienced, you know, here's what my gender orientation is or here's what my sexual orientation is. And there's this ownership of what we're experiencing. And I find it so important to find safe spaces to be able to tell our experience and to be able to share our truth. And I'm like so moved today, Tiffany, with what you're sharing about your experience. Like if Tiffany can rise resilient and stop the patterns that were running through her genetics, like can't anyone like... Is there anything more dysfunctional than having a family member with multiple personalities? Like it is incredible what you've transcended. And for me, that creates so much hope. And I'm so honoring you for speaking to the truth of your experience, for seeking the resources and the tools and the practices to step out of that energy and to transform that energy. It's incredible. And I'm so grateful for so many people in my coaching practice, in the retreats that I run, and that I co-facilitate on, like so many people are speaking up and just telling their experience. How can we do that without judgment? How can we do that without secrecy, without silence, right? That's um, Brene Brown's um, Petri dish for shame to grow. It's got to be secret. It's got to be silent. And there's got to be a ton of self-judgment in there. That's the house I grew up in. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and I mean, I love my grandparents and it's just like, they didn't talk about stuff. They didn't talk just about got sex. swept underneath the rug. About yeah. Abuse. yeah. Sweep that under the rug. You can't let anybody know that your life isn't perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what perfect even mean, right? 
That's like, wow, there's so many courageous people speaking to their experience. And there's so much power in that. The more that we come together in places like Heal the Past, Light the Future Conference to share our experience, to be seen, and then to find the tools to transcend all the garbage that went on, because it doesn't serve anymore. Like how much energy gets freed up when we let the shame go, when we let the guilt go, when we let the secrets that nobody can know when we let all that go, oh, it's so liberating. And yeah. it's, it's a, in, at least in my opinion, for me, my journey has been this never-ending journey. I continue to learn. I continue to serve. And I continue to make mistakes. And I have to keep shifting that self-talk and how I'm showing up to be the best version of myself. And I think that's why I'm so pleased with the, the group of people that you're gathering for this conference, Daniel, you and Corinne. We're all human, and, and I would love for you in a few minutes to talk about each of the presenters and, and what you know they're bringing to the table for us. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating for me when I'm uh, reading a book or listening to some sort of a TED Talk or some sort of podcast, or I see somebody on TV and they've presented themselves as if they've got it all together uh, without telling us, and they don't have to dive deep, you know what I mean? Not everybody has to make their whole platform about, the, you know, the, what their upbringing was back, what like. But when, when, when we can be honest and authentic and organic about who we are and how we're showing, showing up in the world, then others can learn and grow as a result of whatever little snippet we shared. Tiffany, I love that you said in this experience for you, the one you said the one little fleeting story, the one little thought that this presenter shared was this wolf story. And it's likely not the most powerful, impactful thing that she came prepared to share, but that's the nugget you heard. So we never know how we're going to reach people. We just have to be willing to come together in community and in union and willingness. And in that, we can learn to build up our resiliency, our grit, our tenacity, our honesty, our empath, empathic ability, all that. And again, to Tiffany's point, make a change. Stop the cycle of abuse or abandonment or what, whatever it is. I, I had postpartum depression with my two older kiddos who are now in their 20s. And it took a long time for me to find my way to forgiveness, not only for myself, but also the lack and the abandonment that I experienced with their father. And like you, Tiffany, boy, could I relate when you're talking about your kiddos? I look back and I shudder at some of the things that I did that I thought was right in parenting. I read all the parenting books as an early mom, right? And I, but guess what? chapter I skipped, the, the ones on postpartum depression. I read four or five books with both pregnancies. I knew how to breastfeed. I knew how to feed them. I knew how to take care of them and do the diaper. And then I'd get to that chapter on postpartum depression and be like, eh, not me. Like, really, I get to decide that. <laughs> like, it's a decision. <laughs> and then six weeks postpartum with my first kiddo, realizing I, I am not happy. I was having visions and dreams of harming my child in the middle of the night and scared to death to tell my husband. And actually, when I finally did, he said, this is supposed to be the happiest time of your life. Why are you effing miserable? And I thought, he's right. I, I don't, something must be wrong with me, right? That was my journey into really self-discovery and healing myself, which I'll share briefly about what I'm bringing to the conference. It's this forgiveness piece, and then we'll turn it to Daniel, if you would, and share about the rest of the presenters after, and I keep calling it a retreat, but I think we're using the word conference. My apologies. <laughs> retreat. retreat. Yeah, what's that? The conference retreat or the retreat conference. At the closing, uh, after Dan and a half together, uh, when I spoke to Kern and Dan, I suggested that we have an opportunity to come together in a circle and, uh, you know, a real physical circle, but also in community and celebrate everything that has been gained and everything that has been lost in the day and a half that we'll have spent together. I, I did a little brief interview with Dan and I talked about a rubber band and how, uh, you know, if we don't leave, uh, if we don't put some tension on a rubber band, it goes back to the way it is and it really isn't beneficial. A rubber band is great because of the tension and how it can hold things together. And I feel like that's this opportunity with not only the whole retreat and conference, but specifically the forgiveness circle. Before we we say goodbye to everybody and hope to exchange some information with each other that we've connected with, that we fall still and we really give ourselves acknowledgement for the things that we've been carrying and holding on to, maybe for six months, six weeks, maybe just for the day and a half we're together, but for some of us, myself included, maybe a lifetime. And I have a beautiful circle and a ceremony really to help people 
find their way to forgiveness for themselves and others, and perhaps even our higher power, and then open up to the possibilities that are there for us when we leave this conference and take all the skill sets that each of the presenters and the mentors and guides have shared with us. The small little snippets like Tiffany mentioned with the wolf story that maybe none of us really intended would be that golden nugget, but for that participant, it's it's what they came for or the things that we really practiced and rehearsed and prepared and we have years of experiencing doing and where we're influencing. So that's how we'll close our conference together. It'll be a very very private uh, ceremony, but also one that we can collectively share and hold a space for each other. So I now I feel like Tiffany. I'm like, I'm talking too much. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to turn over Dan, if you could, and if you would speak to uh, each, and I can pull up the notes if that's helpful. Who else is joining us? I know, I think first, if we could, let's give some accolades to Corinne, who brought us all together. Is she presenting or she's more just our host and the, the, the brain child who said this is necessary? She's the brain child. She sings in the Tabernacle Choir and she's a really talented realtor. And she's, she's got a lot to share about her own uh, transformative journey as far as finding wellness and finding fulfillment as a mother. She just had this lightning bolt of like, I got to get these people together and we've got to get this conference out to families and she's actually with family members in Germany right now. Um, so just sending her love yes. and so much gratitude for just pulling everybody together. Amazing. And then who else I've got it. Do you have it in front of me? Cause I can share names if that would spark it for you. I, yeah, I've got it here. Okay. Um, so if, if you want to have a ton of fun, you need to meet my friend Nels. Nels drives the drum bus. What is a drum, drum bus, bus is a school bus. They took all the benches out, filled it full of hand drums. Drum bus is coming to heal the past, light the future. And we are going to have so much fun moving what might be potentially heavy, but it's a safe space because it's fun and we get to play with it. It's for all abilities. Anybody can whack. (laughs) Anybody can swing. And that's what I love about drums. That's what I love about shakers. All you got to do is move your hand and you're making sound and you're contributing. Sorry, what what happens us for those who are listening and thinking, is this for me? You mentioned creativity, uh, but what happens when, when we're moving? What shifts for us? I'll tell you this. There's some music therapy literature that shows when we make music together, it releases the bonding hormone oxytocin into the bloodstream. That's the same thing that gets released when mom and infant nurse. It's the same thing we feel when we kiss. So if you'd love to do that just by whacking a drum, like come experience that. There's serotonin release. There's dopamine release. Drumming lowers blood pressure. In, this is like in research clinical trials. Dr. Barry Bittman put out all this research. You're getting an immune system boost with increased cytokine and leukocyte production that happens in the bloodstream while we make music together. Plus, it's just super fun. It's super accessible. I lead groups every week at a resort um, in southern Utah where I just get people that have never, ever played an instrument before. And within 10 minutes, they're just like, oh, my gosh, this is so easy. This is so fun. I can't help but smile. Some folks have tears that come up and they said, I really needed you know, to feel these vibrations in my body today. Like this is so healing. I'm feeling seen here. And those are just some of the benefits from making music together and doing something as harmless as drumming. I love it. So if you're listening and you're thinking, oh dear God, I could never (laughs) bat, you know, bang a baton or or hit a drum. (laughs) What Daniel is saying uh, and and really offering an opportunity for you to come and work through some of that that uncertainty. It's going to be a safe space. It's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of times and experiences like this, we want to step a little bit out of our comfort zone. Some of us can take mega leaps and jumps out of our comfort zone, and others of us just na- need to take the smallest steps. So wherever you're at in your own personal journey as it relates to that, you know maybe you're coming just for this drum bus. It's so fun. Yeah. You'll love it. Good. <laughs> so, the thing with drumming is like there's no right answers and there's no wrong answers. Mm. It's just a place to explore. And oh my gosh, when I nurture creativity in my home, when I turn it into a game, I fight with my son all the time about bath time. He's got sensory stuff and he just hates to take a bath. And we set up some structures and whatever. And he was fighting me the other day 
and he gets this idea on his face and he runs over and grabs um we've got a game that's got like a hundred dice and he dumps all the dice out on the bed and i was about to like be frustrated because i was busy working on important work stuff and he's like dad let's do this i want to play a dice game with you and whoever loses has to start my bath you're like, I'm in. <laughs> right? And he was like ready to play. And I almost said like, no, son, what I'm doing is too important. But like, luckily, I like tuned in to him wanting to play and it completely changed everything. We laughed so hard. We tied like seven times before we had a winner and like we were yelling and laughing and full tooth smiles and eye contact and like all the yumminess that I think homes were intended to embody and create and foster and nurture. And it happens with play and kids are so good at it. And as an adult, I forget. I'm Mm -hmm. so grateful for kids. Um, Music does the same thing. Movement does the same thing. So Lynn Shuck um, is an incredible movement expert. She's in Minnesota, I want to say. I I should know, but I don't. But yeah, somewhere. (laughs) Somewhere on the other side of the country. Yeah, she's coming out. Um, She's got incredible information about how to care for our feet, which will help us care for our knees, which will help us care for our hips, which will help us care for our back, which will help us care for our chest and shoulders and neck and head and spine. Like it all starts with the feet. She's also doing um, movement in between presentations to keep us fresh, to keep us going. It's subtle things like just raise your hand up and notice what that circulates in your bloodstream. She's got so much yumminess. Could I say also, something about Lynn real quick before you move on to the next person? Yeah. Uh, years, so I've known Lynn for years, so I'm excited because we haven't seen each other uh, in person in probably 35 years. There was a time that on Facebook I was sharing that I was having some lower back problem. And she reached out in a private message and she said, if you're willing, I would love to get on a Skype call, <laughs> a video call with you and offer you a session to work through and see if you can release some of the tension in your lower back. And I had been to my chiropractor. I had been to massage therapist. And I had forgotten to live inside my body. And this one 30-minute session with Lynn, uh, that it it totally changed the way that I live in my body. And I'm forever grateful for that. So I'm excited to not only learn and grow with her, but also to give her a big in-person hug and thank her again for something that took place, I think it's got to be 12, maybe even longer than that, 12 years ago. May I ask anybody that's listening right now in this moment, will you take a deep breath through your nose? And let it out and just commit in this moment to be fully in your body. Mm. That is where the magic happens. Be fully here now in my body, present. Thank you. That was a treat, Tiffany. How was that for you? (laughs) Felt grounding. Yeah, fantastic. All right. So uh, Heather Fillmore, at least on my list, is next. Is that who you'd like to speak to next as another guide yes. and mentor? Yeah. Heather is a talented life coach. What I love about this conference is that um, included in the ticket price is a free application session with the presenter of your choice. So Heather Fillmore is a certified life coach, super talented at getting people results, not just fixing their problems, but getting people into that thing that they want to create that lights them on fire. That's so fun that helps you move through all your stuff. So like if you want to work with Heather to shine your light at 10 out of 10 and get that creative project that you've always wanted to get moving, like you can work with Heather for free, like included in the ticket price. Like so stoked to have Heather a part of it. Michelle Scott is a talented energy healer. All things are vibrating. That's what fifth grade science class taught me chairs vibrate they just have slower molecules than water has than air has everything vibrates and so we can play with the energy and identify what kind of energies are running tiffany you spoke earlier to that energy of abuser that runs through tiffany fletcher is not an abuser tiffany fletcher is a human being and there was a time where energy was running through her And she's like, I'm not running this anymore, right? Noticing the energy will shift everything about your experience, will shift your family relationships, will shift your bank account numbers, everything. It's all energy. Super stoked to have Michelle Scott with us. Um, This morning, I just finished an interview with Lisa Higby and like we couldn't stop talking to each other. She spent years in bed, antidepressant medications, um, essentially almost dead to her family 
And she found a combination of products that helped her step out of that. It's centered on gut health and healing the bacteria in her gut. Um, she's got so much research behind like the human body is made of 90% bacteria. And so to make sure that that balance is solid can help so much with mental health. There's so many people that are on anxiety meds, depression meds. It works for some and for others, it's just part of a never ending frustration carousel of let's throw another pill at my body and see if it helps. And she's got some beautiful, um, nature supplements and an incredible transformation story um, to share with everybody about how to get our gut brain in touch with our regular brain and align that with the heart brain and just bring all sorts of wellness to the body. Also with us is Terry Graff. She's super amazing at identifying energies and helping people um, with their spiritual foundation. Also Sarah Affleck will be with us. Her jam is emotions and relationships and she's got a ton to add. Um, Dustin Bingham is an addictions counselor and sees a ton of amazing results. He, his family experienced a ton of addiction um, with substance abuse and he was able to navigate that and help them. And now he helps so many people all the time step out of their substance abuse addictions. He is a powerful force for good, excited to have him. And um, Melanie Hancock will also be sharing some of her journey, what it was like to be single for a lot longer than she thought, how to find happiness where you're at, as you're at, and then create the thing that you most love. Um, And she's got a really great humor. I don't even know if that's a word. (laughs) A humoristic spin on what she teaches. And oh, power packed group of people. So pumped. I, I, I'm like, I want a week with everybody. I don't want just a day and a half. I want a full week. <laughs> but that's, that speaks to what you shared that each of us have offered. Well, I believe most of us have offered an opportunity for participants to decide who they'd like to spend, you know, another consultative opportunity, an exploratory opportunity with any one of us following the conference. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, because I've gone to conferences before and it's like, this is so great. And I take like a million pages of notes and like four <laughs> days later, I'm like, I'm womp, still womp, in my womp. problem. <laughs> yeah. So to have like a human being that has gone through this transformative journey to walk me through my specific, because, you know, I get, well, my wife's this and you don't understand my mother-in-law. Like, it's, right. Those stories come up all the time. Like it, my story is different. You don't get it. it. And like to have somebody listen one-on-one so that they can get it. And to help the personal application happen, like that's what this conference is all about. Yeah, I kept wanting to interrupt and I apologize for that. What was sparking for me is many times I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on coaching and retreats and conferences. And I mean, you name it, I'm kind of a self-help junkie. And to speak to that when I have left a conference or a retreat or even working one-on-one with a coach, I'm I have, I was wide open and I was ready to receive. And then I got pissed off or angry when I went back into my own environment that not everybody was ready to receive me <laughs> with this newfound freedom. And I mean, that's what I made it mean, right? Uh, and so I made my husband, both my current husband and my ex-husband, I made my kids wrong or my friends wrong. And so what we're talking about is holding you in that sacred space when we're together in the conference and also through not only our our closing ceremony in the forgiveness circle but also preparing for you preparing you for how to tenderly hold yourself in, uh, in the weeks and months and years to come and then again this beautiful connection with you know kind of an accountability conversation or an exploratory conversation with one of the presenters uh, to help you make that transition Tiffany, I would love... Now, is that everybody aside from Tiffany? We're blessed enough to have Tiffany on the call with us. So I want to spend a little special attention around her being a resiliency expert. Is But is there... Yeah. That's everybody, Dan? Yeah? Yes. Okay, cool. So Tiffany, I've got a few questions for you specifically, and I, I feel very uh, fortunate that we have you on on this, uh, this show with us today. Uh, resiliency expert, when you are asked to, invited to speak, what is the, what is the one thing that that you hear from participants or even even the folks who invite you to speak that you know you are making a difference? Like, what's the greatest compliment that you can hear from somebody after you've shared your wisdom and your experiences and skill set? 
let me share an experience because I think those are stories are so they just demonstrate. Um, I had the opportunity. I was blessed to be asked to speak in a halfway house um, where there are addiction recovery adults that are trying to change their life and break those cycles of addiction that, that they get themselves in. And so it was a very rough crowd. Um, that was there. And um, after I shared these resiliency skills that I have learned, um, which, which is interesting. So I, in the, I was, I grew up in the eighties, which that tells you my age, but um, back then, um, this positive psychology wasn't even a thing. It, it really wasn't a thing. And so um, when I learned in the nineties, well, as I started studying things, I learned that in the nineties, this this whole new section of psychology called positive psychology actually started to be formed. And they, instead of always just um, studying depressed people, they thought, well, let's study happy people and see what makes them happy, which does. I mean, that right. really makes perfect sense, right? And so as they were doing this, they learned that happy people use do these happiness skills that help them to have resilience. And um, those were the exact skills that I had used as a child that I just naturally to help me get through those hard things. And as I distilled all of these things, I, I could pinpoint, yes, I did this, I did this, I did this. And so it was really, so what I really teach are psychology's happiness skills. And I teach people ha- that happiness is a choice and it is something that you can, resilience is learned. It's not just something that you grow up with. Yes, I had it naturally, but you can learn it as well. And so anyway, in this setting with um, this group of adults, as I had taught them these happiness resiliency skills, these happiness skills, um, one of the men who was a, you know, a, a scary looking guy with tattoos up his arm and shaved head. And he came up and he said, can I give you a hug? He said, I have never had anything touch me in my heart the way you touched me. And he said, I am changed from what you've taught me. And he said, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come here today and teach me those things that can help me break my own cycles. And so for me, it's really just um, teaching people skills that we can all learn that we just don't know how to access. And so um, it's just a beautiful thing to use my story to show Of course, these resiliency skills work. I live in light my whole life. My kids don't know abuse. I am not an abuser. I I go out and I try my very best to um, make this world a better place by using my story. But then I can share these skills and say, this is how these skills brought me from darkness to light. And if you apply them in your own life, it will help you also move from darkness to light. And that's powerful powerful to be able to be given the tools that can help you break your own cycles. It's a really powerful thing. And, and I feel like it's such a, my, my childhood was such a gift so that I could be able to, um, go out there and share those, those resiliency skills, happiness skills with others. Oh my gosh. So much. And, and the one thing that really resonates me with me, and I'm compelled to share this for our listeners we're not, none of us, the three of us, and I think the other presenters, I trust that they have the same idea. We're not saying that the life you've lived thus far is wrong. <laughs> we are all saying, thank God, thank whomever and, and everyone that have given me this past, the brokenness and the light, so that I can be who am, I am today. And that's what we're saying. So we're not coming into this and making, you know, your family of origin wrong for having abuse or mental illness or anything else, right? We're collectively saying, stand the presence of who you are. Find your way to have a, a tool set and a skill set that brings you closer to light and happiness and joy and peace and whatever is most important to you. And stop uh, the the dark cycle that we create in families, oftentimes unbeknownst to us. And even if you don't have a tragic past and you're like, I had a pretty decent you know, upbringing and I, I do pretty well with my kids, we're not uninviting you to this conference. We're saying just come and be present with who you are. Share and celebrate with other human beings and let's move beautifully into our own futures together so we can continue to lift everybody up. Would you both agree? Absolutely. Like I 
the thing that I was thinking that came to me while you're saying that is, <clears throat> and I was talking to Daniel about this, heal the past doesn't necessarily mean years ago. Heal the past could have been you yelled at your child yesterday and you have a bad relationship with them and you want to be able to heal that relationship so that you don't have to move into a space of negativity with them, but you can move into a place, a place of connection. And so healing the past isn't a, a difficult childhood. It is learning <clears throat> from the experiences that we've been given on a daily basis and learning how to move into a greater space of light because we can always progress in light no matter where we are. We can always add more light to our countenance and be, and to our stature and to be able to shine brighter for those around us. And, and I think that that's what this conference is about. It's saying, come where you are, come where you've been, come share where you've been, share your stories with us. We, there is power in sharing your story, share your story and share your transformation and let us help transform together. So I think that wouldn't you say, Daniel, that that's what it's about? It is for me. I, I, I notice so often when I do hospice work that there are so many amazing adults in their fifties and early sixties who are caring for their aging parents that have got who knows what weird health stuff that didn't even exist 20 years ago. They've got their own kids, some of which are well adjusted and some of which are not quite what, you know, are living patterns that they hadn't quite hoped. They've got grandkids coming into the picture and all of a sudden these folks are caring for three generations besides their own, not to mention their own stuff day to day and their career. And, you know, if they've chosen to pursue a committed partnership and whatever else, like how do we support those folks in their fifties and sixties going through all these transitions, right? Kids are really sweet when they're eight and as they grow, <laughs> right? It's such a different relationship with teenagers. And then again, into their twenties when they're starting their professional careers and stepping into making all their own choices. Right. And now you're talking with a functional adult and it's like, Whoa, nobody taught me this. It's like a whole new, <laughs> whole new transition to navigate. How do we support all these folks? It's coming together. It's sharing our stories and our experiences. It's sharing the principles. And like Tiffany said, it's empowering each person to connect in their own body to get their own answers. Yeah, that we're just there to open up and offer opportunities and skills that we've learned over time that we know have worked. And our participants get to pick and choose what they want to take away and develop their own skill set. Yeah. I'm hoping, too, that there are participants who are with us who maybe even play in the same space professionally that each of us do. You know, this isn't just for somebody who might be novice and, and green. We welcome you. This is a very safe space to come and learn and grow. And maybe this is the very beginning of your journey into self-discovery and really owning that light that Tiffany spoke so beautifully about. But and, and we want to offer it up to anybody, no matter where you are in your journey. Uh, Daniel, with that in mind, uh, if you don't have a family right now, you know, if you're not a mother or a father, is it a space for an individual as well? Since we've kind of been saying this is really around family, how is that? How does that work for someone who might be interested in, and says, well, I can't come because I don't have a family? Well, I mean, are you a son and are you a daughter and are you a nephew and are you an uncle? Like, do you relate with other human beings day to day through some kind of genetic link? And, and, and maybe not. There are folks that I know that are, they have no kin. If you're a human being with a pulse and you interact <laughs> with other human beings, we need this you. It's, is for you. Yeah. And we need you to be there. We need your story. Yeah. Like, that's an experience I haven't had yet. How much could I benefit? by you sharing your story of what it's like to be lone wolf in it, whether that's empowering or whether that's so lonely or anything in between, like how much could you bless the space by what you shine? Yeah. Love it. Tiffany, you use the word, <coughs> word light uh, several times um, as you're talking about, can you describe when it was for you that you first became fascinated with light and, and what does light mean or represent for you? Yeah, sorry, having a coughing fit here. <coughs> and you, you do have to tell sorry, our um, you do have to tell our listeners where you are in order to do this so this radio show too so they understand why you haven't gone to grab a drink of water. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm in my closet right now. <laughs> I love it. 
because I have five children out there. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, so I haven't gone to get a drink of water because I have children out there. And here I am selfishly <laughs> taking a drink for you. Sorry about that. Take that was very me. unconscious. Take one for me. <laughs> okay, so light, your fascination with light, and what does yeah. that mean for you? So um, when I was young, well, I was about um, 20, in my 20, early 20s, my sister um, had left. She she um, was a missionary for our church. She had gone to Chicago and she had sent me a lighthouse from the Lake Michigan. <laughs> she sent me a, a lighthouse little structure and uh, she said, Tiffany, even though we grew up in darkness, we can still be light for others. Like we don't have to take that darkness with us. We can still be a light. She said, you can still be a light. And that always stuck with me. And so I started studying lighthouses and I started studying, um, I just became fascinated with them. And I, um, I learned that each one is unique. Each one um, is painted differently. It's built differently. They're unique. And um, the light that is on one cannot put be put on another. So you can't take a light uh, lens from Maine and put it on in California. It wouldn't work because they are cut for the um, distance they need to shine. Or at least this is the way it was in the olden times. And the more cuts that it had, the further out it shined. And so I really thought about this beautiful, um, <clears throat> beautiful idea that I want to be a lighthouse, a lighthouse um, that is unique. I want to stand where I am. I want to shine. The cuts that I have, the trials that I've gone through, they only make me brighter and they allow me to reach more people. And um, I love the fact that lighthouses have a strong foundation and that they were built for the storms. They were built for the storms and um, they have to, ha you have to have your light. Um, that light has to be on in order to rescue people because a darkened lighthouse rescued no one. You have to have that light. And so I feel it is my personal mission to teach people how to turn their light on and how to become that lighthouse where they stand in their life and how to be that beacon and keep their light on so that those people who were looking to them for rescue or for safety or for peace will be able to find it because their light is beckoning to them to come. So to me, it's so, so symbolic and so beautiful. And, and I truly believe that the more light we receive, <clears throat> then the less darkness we have, because it is a true principle even in the physical world, that light dispels darkness. And um, so it is my goal to raise the level of light in us individually and as a community and as a home, as a nation, and to help make our own homes, our personal homes, houses of light, lighthouses for ourselves, for our children, and for those who, who may need rescuing from us. Lit. Yeah. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> I am so honored and so excited to be part of this conference with both of you and just the the energy, the synergy, and I have no doubt that the other presenters and participants are going to make up make us this this family. You know, even if just temporary for a day and a half, we're going to grow and learn so much from each other and I am I am already forever grateful. Wow. Daniel, let's close this segment, if we can, by sharing with people where to find information about the conference. Again, it's Heal the Past, Light the Future, uh, Sandy, Utah, uh, at the, um, the, the Salt Lake Community College Miller Campus. Is that right? That is right. Yeah. And September 27th and 28th. Uh, we're on Eventbrite, so you can go to Heal the Past, Light the Future, and find us on Eventbrite. We also have a Facebook page by the same name. And Dan, what else can you add that I haven't thought to mention uh, as we close out today's segment? We would love to get you to this conference for less than a tank of gas at Costco. And so right now, go grab your tickets. Get on Eventbrite. And uh, there's a promo code that's Early Implementer. One word, and that'll get you 35% off the ticket price. Which is amazing, already very... Amazing, amazing, amazing value. Yeah. We want to make this family friendly. We want anybody's budget for this to work. Please come shine in this space with us. We're so grateful for what's being created here. Um, like 
Karen said you can go through Facebook and check out the event on Facebook, Yield the Past, Light the Future. That's one place to get tickets. Find it on Eventbrite, Yield the Past, Light the Future. It's in September. Um, if the early implementer code doesn't work out, use promo code FAMILY. That'll get you 25% off. Every veteran gets in at 30% off. Please let us care for our veterans. Please come to this veterans. Love to serve you there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your service and what you've given so that it's even possible to like run conferences. Thank you. Tiffany, anything else that you want to add? You may not have anything, but lasting parting words with us. Just love. Be kind, courageous, and just love. And come so that we can love you. And take and get your love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Excited. I'll be traveling from Arizona. I know Lynn is coming from that side of the country. I think everybody else is kind of in the Utah area, Dan. But that's what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where we're coming from. We need you to be there. We want you to be there. If you have any questions and you're, you know, based on what you've heard us share today and you're not sure if this is for you, you can reach out to any one of us and, and certainly Dan, who's kind of holding us all in this beautiful basket to help organize and put this on. And I know it takes a lot to put on conferences, Dan, and I'm very grateful for you and Corinne for not only inviting all of us to come and play in your space and help you with this, but also for leading the charge uh, on behalf of, the, you know, being the leader in that and facilitating this journey for us so beautifully. So thank you. You're welcome. You've been listening to Phoenix Business Radio with Business Radio X, broadcasting live from within the Max 6 and Conscious Capitalism Arizona studio. Some media leans left, some lean right, and we lean business. Until next time, I'm Karen Nowicki. Thanks for being here. Mm-hmm.